Hello, everybody. Yeah. You right? Do you want to interrupt me one more time? What was? Why did you interrupt me? Care to share with the rest of the group? It's just really long three. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. My threes are not as long as your threes. Long get going. Oh, yep, yeah, coach. Right. <laughs> Today is the delayed kickoff end of season awards. Can I get an ooh? Well, no, that, uh, that, that yeah, that went down well. Um, where we just give end of season awards. Uh, everyone wants to win a delayed kickoff award. I mean, yeah, I'm sure we give a shit. Yeah, that goes yeah. straight into the bloody ceremony, the bloody whatever you call it, trophy cabinet. Shows how many awards I've won. Bloody hell, I don't even know what trophy cabinet is. Right, Maximus and Jamie are here. Do you want to say hello? Hello, hello, hello. Beautiful. Right, let's get straight into it with the first category, which is signing of the season. The nominees are Bruno Fernandes of Manchester United, Mateo Kovacic of Chelsea, Adrian of Liverpool, and wan of Manchester United, Alan St. Maximum of Newcastle United, and Danny Ings of Southampton. Where do you want to start with this one? Right, so I think we all agree we can rule Alan St. Maximum out of this immediately. Wait, hmm? why is Adrian in there? Why's Adrian in yeah, there? Yeah, I don't know why Adrian's in there. I don't know why Alan sent Maximum. There was a there. period. There was a period at the start of the season for Liverpool where he basically saved them. What, one game, and then cost them the Champions League. One game, which wasn't. Yeah, this is the Premier League awards. He had one in the Premier League. It was in that game against Chelsea. He was. He was crucial. <laughs> and looking at all the other signings people have made. It's a process of elimination more than anything else. That's fair. Right. Right. Well, well, there's only two you can choose from, to be honest. I'm going to say mine, which Jamie is going to absolutely love. I'm going to say AWB Aaron Wambisaka. Okay. Um, that's. I, I can see why you said that. That's actually oh, just throwing something. Um, yeah, I can see why you've said Aaron Wambisaka. Yeah, I've got, I think it's Bruno Fernandes, but I also think Danny Ings is a good show. Uh, you've ruled yeah, out Alan Wan-Bissaka. They had Danny Ings on loan last season, so I don't really call him a signer. Yeah, that was yeah. the opposite he's on the list. Uh, mm. So why have you uh, ruled out AWB? Me? I mean, if I have or to ask. Jamie. Yeah, he, he improved us a lot. We went from Ashley Young to Aaron wan Hmm. But, He's just not really the complete package yet. Like, Am I allowed to use the word that you put in the group? What, what was that? Um, he's something oh. going forward. Uh, what? He reminds I me can't. of going forward. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that. On the ball, he's we'll, 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 we'll go with that. In On the, the absence ball. of anything else. Um, Kaku was. So. Um, I, I do have flashbacks when I see him dribble. I have flashbacks of Lukaku falling over the ball. Yeah, like that Ronaldo chop the other week. It, that didn't yeah, come he off. Doesn't look cut. He doesn't look like a footballer when he's got the ball. He just doesn't look comfortable at all. Yeah, I, I agree with that, but I still think he's been I don't think a he's really good signing. He's he's probably been Man United's best yeah. player or one of the best players this season. Just because he's no I out form up to lockdown. Bruno came in in January, which and he's done extremely well. Yeah, but in terms of actual impact on a team, Bruno Fernandes is by far the best signing out. Oh, yeah, 100%. Literally I because... think, personally, um, obviously, United's midfield is... While, while it was depleted, it was still better than your defence. So, I would actually argue Bissaka more than you needed Fernandes. That's complete shit. Nah, yeah, honestly, mate. Really... Who did you have at right back instead? You... you had Ashley Young, right? You needed Wan Bissaka down that side. I'm telling you. Right, did you see yeah. the, did you did see you the see thing? The field before Bruno Fernandes came. We had Lingard or Pereira in that position. No, that's I know true. That there was a creativity absence for Man United, and he came in and unlocked it in a sense. Before Bruno signed, we was literally shit. Like we're un- I, pers- I don't know. Me personally, I think I think that Young was a position you needed to improve on more. 
because Dallo wasn't going to cut it yet. Um, and yeah, I, I personally, I just think it was a position you could have improved on more. I would rather take Wemba Saka out of team and put Dallo in there than take Bruno Fernandes out of team and put Lingard and Pereira back. That, that's I mean, Lingard's on good it. form at the minute, mate. He's just scored a goal. <laughs> He's the last player in the Premier League to score goals. <laughs> um, oh dear. I, I yeah, I think it has to be Bruno Fernandes, even though he's coming in January. He's just performed so well in those months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're putting Bruno Fernandes in their team of the season, and he joined in January. Exactly. There was a case for Danny Ings, but I just think in terms of impact. Bruno Fernandes. Yeah, Fernandes has had the most impact, but I think Juan Bissaka is probably the most needed. But that is just my personal opinion. You guys can disagree because I, I think I think Bruno got... Fernandes takes this two to one and majority rules in these sorts of scenarios. Single handedly carried mm. his league. So Yeah. I mean how many games have you lost with where Fernandez has played? It's one against Liverpool, isn't it? Not in the league. In the Premier League. Lost zero, you know. No, I swear you lost to Liverpool after he signed. No, that was because he signed right at the end of January. Oh, uh, so was that in January? Yeah. His first game was. Yeah, I remember when he signed because. Because we lost to Arsenal, Liverpool, Sunday. and Burnley. And then he signed, yeah. and then we haven't lost in the league since. Not lost the game in the Prem since. Oh, well, so I well, think well. it's safe to say Bruno is signing the season. Bruno. Bruno. Yeah, 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 100%. Let's hope he can keep it, carry, carry on into next season. Yes. Um, let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum and go for flop of the season. This is someone who is also a signing. Uh, it's just basically the flop. You don't need like much explanation. Gonna... What was that? I feel like we're all going to agree on this one. We, uh, the nominees Jamie, are... Can I hear your opinion on it? Because I feel like I might agree with you. Well, well let's, go, let's, let's get the nominees out of the way first. Come on. I, one oh, sec. Go on. I'm itching to get started. Right, yeah, see, see the nominees. See the right. nominees. David Louise of Arsenal, Nicholas Pepe of Arsenal, Joe Linton of Newcastle, Sebastian Haller of West Ham, Moise Keane of Everton, and Wesley of Aston Villa. I, uh, no doubt Joe Linton, 40 million for two goals is shite. That's my notes. <laughs> yes, I agree. I, like, yeah, I uh, was going to say Moise Keane, but I'm not going to because he's still very young and he could still pull it off. Under Ancelotti, who knows, he's obviously seen the striker in the Serie A before, and he'll know how he works. So I think he'll get, he'll have a good season next season, personally. Um, obviously, that's going to come back to bite me in the arse when he's loaned out to Derby at the end of next year. But um, no, honestly, I've been. Oh, Is that Wayne Rooney's Derby? I agree, Joel Linton. But if we were going to do La Liga, I would say Eden Hazard, one hundred million for a one league goal, is even worse. Yeah, but. This is the Premier League Awards, Max. No, I know, but I was just I just wanted to throw in my hazard agenda. Yeah. Um, just like Chaz will no doubt shoehorn in his Adama agenda. I don't have an agenda against Adama. I'd like to throw that into existence. It's between Joel Linton and Hall, I think. Yeah, right. We, we like to joke about the Arsenal guys, but David Luiz has had good games. Even though when he plays poorly, he, oh my God, he breaks yeah. Arsenal. But he has had some good games, as has Pepe. Slow start, but he's been okay. And then, like, he is at the end of the day still David Luiz, but yeah, he has improved the defense exactly. And they would have done better had they signed him, which they did, and had they not, because they were useless without him. They're not much better with him, but he has improved slightly. I do agree with you on that one. No, yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, Wesley's just well, I don't know where to start with Wesley to be honest so. but yeah I agree I, think I, I do um, he's not worth yeah worth the cash a comment earlier and someone said everyone's all the Villa fans are saying what a great season they had because they stayed up um, if I was spending 160 mil on shot I'd expect to finish in the top 10 but there we go how much was Wesley signed for? Oh. 30 mil 25 mil it, it wasn't he the most expensive Villa player at the time? Yeah, I think he was. So yeah, tw- twenty five, I think something around there. But yeah, I mean, you can't excuse Joe Linton, I'm afraid. Yeah. I think we're all in no, agreement you can't. in that category, right? Flop of the season, Joe Linton. I, I think. It-
Joe Linton, yeah, he wins it. Well done. Yeah, congratulations. congratulations. Now we go to individual performance of the season. This is a single player performing in one game. The nominees are Trent Alexander-Arnold against Leicester. Adama Traore versus Man City. We'll get to that. Sergio Aguero versus Aston Villa. De Bruyne versus Arsenal. You could pick either of them. He did both. Antonio against Norwich. Traore against Man City. And Ismail Saar against Liverpool. Where are we starting with this one then? We're all going to have different ones. Aren't we? I, I actually think that Saar and Adama is pretty similar. Yeah. So obviously against two top teams, they both scored two goals. They both caused the defence nightmares during those games. Um, I could... personally think Aguero v Aston Villa is a very good game as he broke the record for the most hat-tricks, I think it was, in Premier League season or in Premier League history. Um, yeah, they tied on the didn't they? I don't want to be biased, but I am going to say Adama v Man City was a very, very good it, here's well, my so thing. Kevin De Bruyne against Arsenal because he just had an insane game that day. A I think with this, you said to try and Saar is very similar, or very similar. Mm. Arguably, you yeah. could make a case Liverpool's defence is harder to break down than Man City's. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I, I suppose, since, especially since Laporte was out. So, but I mean, try a great player in Fernandinho back there. It's true, but he's not a natural centre back. Yeah, well, it's true. Full, full strength, I believe. Well, um, Jamie, what's your? Uh, my choice is the one that Max wanted to remove. Antonio uh, against Norwich. Goals against Norwich. Okay. I feel like. Why? I mean, it was probably the biggest shock. Like, I didn't think Antonio would score four goals this season, never mind in one game. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but. At that, at that point in time, Norwich were a championship side. Yeah, it was a very, it was, well, I mean, they weren't officially relegated by then, were they? Yeah, they were. No, that, that was, was the game. That was the game. That. Yeah, I mean. That's why I like it. It's against not really important. It was a very important game for West Ham. Like they yeah, had of course it was. But I, I personally, goals. I appreciate that you can turn it on when that happens. But I don't know, against that Norwich defence, I don't know. It's a weird one. It was, did that this season. It was the they game so, that relegated Norwich and basically kept West Ham safe. No, I'd argue the game that kept West Ham safe was um, when they beat Watford 3-1. Well, that was... The, well, yeah, that that was I mean, the winning 4-0. Of West Ham season. Yeah, but to get to that, they had yeah. beat Norwich 4-0, which was... Norwich was so important because mm. if, they, if they didn't beat Norwich, they would have been in the shit. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. That's, yeah, that's true. And so um, pulled it out of the bag, four goals in the game. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Four goal, four goals is a good is a good amount of goals in the game, obviously. But I don't know. I, I personally wouldn't be wouldn't be saying that because I look at the quality of that Norwich side, and it was just so poor going into the end of the season. Like they were clear, they were clearly thinking, "Oh, we're down. We just like we're beyond saving." I personally, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't get behind that. Well. I've actually gone with um, Trent Alexander-Arnold against Leicester. Oh, okay. Now, that was a good performance. Because he's got two got goals and an assist, and they won the game 4-0. And that, for me, was the game where I thought Liverpool... That, it was yeah, almost, because they opened up, yeah. because Leicester were chasing them. That was they, the game. Like I say chasing them. They were still like a good 10 points behind them, but that was when they beat Leicester. Obviously, they opened up a bit more of a gap so I thought go on and win the league because they've got a lot of quality and that Leicester were in a really good form as well they've won like eight games on the, on the spin and it was yeah oh, oh, actually I'm going to I'm going to change my I'm going to agree with that uh, if I had to pick one but isn't Antonio I'd go for Alexander Arnold yeah, yeah. it was I'm a good gonna, defensive performance as well it was an assist for a right back against Leicester as well they were a good team yeah you probably got to go with Alexander Arnold yeah yeah, oh, I, yeah. I think that's agreed of course. Antonio, yeah. I think, gets a close second, but TAA yeah, of course. against Leicester gets the individual performance of the season. Moving on to Love surprise it. package of the season. Now, this one we can just breeze bree- I'm not going to say breeze over, actually. Um, six cat- uh, nominees. They are John Lundstrom, 
Emiliano Martinez of Arsenal, Adama Troyori, Bukaro Saka, Harvey Barnes, and Gabriela Martinelli. I've just realised there's three half of the nominees of Arsenal players, which I'm not proud of, but we'll go over it anyway. I'm going to say Martinelli. I already knew Blonde Strand was good because I'd seen him play in the Championship for Sheffield United. Um, I don't think anybody expected him to replicate replicate it though, and more. Oh, than mate! Him. Honestly, the way he can the way he can move the ball and what he can do with it, mate. Honestly, I genuinely thought he was a Premier League player when I was watching him. He he was so good, and I said I, I remember sitting there and saying to Dad, "Look, we need that that we play in that position. We need to sign him." And that was like, yeah, I agree with that. Even even when even when we beat they beaten us three like we beaten them three 0 I was sat sat there thinking right that's he's a quality player but that's just my opinion I personally think Martinelli who have you got Charlie it's a tough one um, as much as I'm a big fan of Saka I'm te- I'm going to go with uh, Martinez just because nobody expect when Leno got injured everyone was like oh Arsenal are really in the shit now but he came in and is probably rivaled Leno. Yeah, you know, I agree. Crap at Wolves, but he's rivaled Leno. And is Leno going to go straight back into the Arsenal team? I don't think it's going to be an easy decision for Arteta. No, so, not at all. Just in terms of support, I know it was towards the end of the season. It didn't mean much for Arsenal. They hmm. were still, fun, and I mean, I know it's Premier League, but he could be a big part in them winning an FA Cup this Saturday. So. Like, that's oh, my they will Martinez. Win it. I, I've got a feeling they might as well because that's an Arsenal thing to do. They just win FA yeah, Cups. That's, yeah. that's probably for the best because then we can push up. Mm. Jamie? Uh, I went with Saka. I, I think can see that. I chose that because I don't think, apart from Arsenal fans, I don't think many people had heard of him before the start of the season. And it, he's turned out to be Probably one of the best youngsters in the league, rivaling Greenwood and Foden. Yeah, I agree with that. Actually, totally agree. I, I only put him there just because he is a surprise. I put Martinelli in there purely because before this season he was playing in the fourth tier of Brazilian football, and to come and make that step from the Premier League like up to the Premier League, to do well, so well against that Liverpool team. As much as they were youngsters, there were a few experienced heads in there as well. You'd expect to get the job done. Like he, he had a stellar game that game. And he's done really well in the Premier League since. I personally think, yeah, Martinelli. My issue with Martinelli, and I'm a, I am a good big fan of Martinelli's, but he, ha- I don't think he's done it throughout the season. Yeah, he's had a bit of an injury. He's, I think he's more done it in cups and yeah. Europa League rather than in the league. That's why I'm kind of yeah. avoiding no, Martinelli. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can agree with that, but I still think it's massive that he came from the Brazilian fourth tier. Right, it, we got he helped his side get promoted. Then he went to Arsenal, and he's just turned it on ever since. And he's been amazing. I, yeah. I'm happy to change to uh, Saka. I think yeah, uh, that's just been a bit. Uh, that's fair enough because it's, Saka's been it, uh, outstanding this season as well. I think Arsenal have got a very bright future. He's not even. He's not really been playing in his preferred position. Exactly. So he's very versatile. Back, wing, centre mid. Yeah. He's a very versatile player. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm gonna go with Saka. I think, yeah, it's for the best because Saka's surprise package of the season. Next up, shock of the season. We've got some good ones in here. Watford 3, Liverpool 0. Leicester 9, Southampton 0. Man City 4, Liverpool 0. Norwich 3, Man City 2. Man United 4, Chelsea 0. And Man City 0, Wolves 2. Um, see, I would say the Wolves won, Norwich won, or the Leicester won because You'd never expect to have nine goals put past you, but you wouldn't also expect Norwich to do that because they were, I don't know, they, they throughout the season I thought they, they had a bad summer in terms of getting players, and I just thought, nah, that's that's them down as good as down, I think, over the summer. It was a big decider, obviously, and in January they, they didn't recruit heavily, but they didn't not recruit heavily. They brought in a couple of players that they thought would help, but I don't think they did in the end. But I'm going to say it's a toss up between those. I'm gonna let you two. I I think it I think it has to be Leicester. 
Mm. Yeah, 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 no, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm originally thinking, but I do think the Norwich one has a bit more impetus considering yeah. they finished rock bottom of the Premier League in no, five games. Here's my issue with the Norwich one. Yeah. Right now, which, I mean, we are doing the awards right now, but that's a crazy result. But then it was, what, second or third game into the season? Norwich weren't really dreadful oh, straight know, off the bat. Man City seven, weren't seven. that good off the... I just think... If there was any time for Norwich to beat Man City, it would have well, been Laporte at the start of the season. Out. Yeah, true. I don't, I don't think yeah. Norwich. Norwich had a load of injuries, though. They had yeah. a load of injuries. Yeah, game. they had so many, to be fair. So, there's a shock in that. Um, it I, is I'm, a shock, but I don't think it's as much of a shock because so it always happens every season. A small team beats a big team. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a more of a regular occurrence, whereas nine nil. Exactly. Equal United. No, I think I, I can get behind that. To be fair, if you're going to say Leicester, I can get behind that because yeah, no one expects to be beaten nine nil, especially at home. My, my my choice personally, and I'm willing to go Leicester as well, but my personal choice would be the Watford three nil against Liverpool because nobody saw anyone beating Liverpool, let alone a Watford side who are fighting relegation, let alone three nil. You might have thought the scrape of one nil or two one. To beat him three nil when you're fighting relegation. I want to say something, but I'm going to get ripped for it. Like you, go on. You're going to be like, no, we thought what we could get something against them because they were fighting for their lives at that point, and they were in such good form under Pearson. I genuinely thought they were going to be a team to take points off Liverpool. I would rip into you for that if I didn't remember. I actually think you said that to me before. Yeah, the game. I genuinely said it to you, and everyone was like, "No, they won't." And then they went and beat him three 0 and I was like, "Well, I said that, didn't I?" And you all laughed at me. Yeah, but you said you think they could have got something at Liverpool against Liverpool. You did. Yeah. You, you, even you wouldn't have expected a three. I wouldn't have expected a three 0 win. I'd have expected a, a three 0 win, or maybe a one 0 defeat for for Watford. But I, I genuinely. And they played them so well when they played Anfield, Pearson's first game. I thought, oh Christ, they Liverpool have got a hard game in the reverse fixture because they're not gonna lie down and just let them beat them. Like they're gonna try their hardest. Yeah, so, uh, but I'm 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 think Jamie is right and is more likely to see that than yeah. nine 0 against Leicester. So I'm happy to go Leicester nine Southampton nil. Yeah, I'm as well. Yeah. Right, that's the. Shock of the season, Leicester 9, Tampton 0. Let's go to young player of the season, which I need to clarify is under 21, not 21. So before the keyboard warriors start typing Trent Alexander-Arnold, stop, because he doesn't qualify. Just breeze through this one, Mason Greenwood. Mason Greenwood, Phil Foden, Bakaya Saka, Brandon Williams, Pedro Neto, Eric Garcia. I think Greenwood's... The Morgan Gibbs-White. Irrelevant. I think Mason Greenwood's... <laughs> Or well, apparently he's going to West Ham. Oh my! Ask Jack Wilshere how that goes for young players. Oh, yeah. Not good. Um, yeah, like Foden's done well, but he's only done well post lockdown. Greenwood has yeah, done, done better post lockdown, but he's done it all season. Saka probably close second. Brandon Williams is okay. Neto's okay. No, Garcia's only come in. Not beat around the yeah, he's got to be. He's been so good whenever he's played all season. I've never ever seen an eighteen-year-old look so com- comfortable on the ball. Yeah, he's it's unbelievable. Like he's he's two-footed as well. He looks comfortable on both feet. The fact that yeah. he's so he's by far the best finisher at United. I, I watched one hundred percent is amazing. I watched an interview with him on the Sky Sports did, and um, the interviewer asked, "Oh, what foot are you at? Are you actually?" And he, he was like, "Left foot." But I practice basically with both. Anything I do on my left foot, I do on my right. And that's a good mindset to have. Yeah, so, it's incredible how ambidextrous he is. I just think. Hmm. Yeah. Did you, did you hear what Solskjaer said about him? What? <laughs> he was like, you, you can tell when he's been up playing the PlayStation all night because he comes into training and he's just not quite as sharp as he should be. <laughs> oh, dear. I mean, he's got. He's got a goal every 130 minutes in the Premier League. Yeah. That's astonishing that's, that's, for an 18-year-old. Yeah, for an 18-year-old, that's insane. That's, what, every one and a half game? Yeah, basically. I mean, everyone was saying about his goals to 
games ratio where he's been off the bench in like the last 20 minutes of his season. So Yeah, and uh, sometimes picking up a crucial point or crucial points for United as well. Yeah, he, sa- he saved United quite a few times this season. Wasn't it against Everton he did? He yeah. scored as well? Yeah, he got us a point against Everton. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Greenwood, 100%. Young player of the season, Mason Greenwood. Right, next up, we've got the, 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 the probably the most fun award. And it's going to cause lots of debate. The conversation, fuck up of the season. Now. Oh, we could spend a while on this. Disclaimer. Yeah, Disclaimer. Disclaimer. That's probably not going to be the first swear word in this particular category. Here we go. Trent Alexander-Arnold's handball against Manchester City. No, 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 no. Disclaimer. That Aston Villa v Sheffield United goal is not a VAR decision. It was a there we goal go. line tech decision. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, that's no GDS instead of VAR. So... Stop crying. Um, yeah, otherwise, that would be top of the list. Yeah, but it's not. Trent Alexander-Arnold's handball against Manchester City. De La Faye's penalty call versus Tottenham Hotspur. Lindelof's foul for the goal against Liverpool. Socrates' goal against Crystal Palace. Neto's goal against Liverpool. Kane's goal against Sheffield United. Maguire's cock kick, as I'm calling it, against Chelsea on Batshuayi. Henry Lansbury's goal against Crystal Palace. Bruno's penalty against Villa. And Doherty's handball against Burnley. Whew, um, that's a lot. I personally think that it is. Like, I'm not even being biased here. It's genuinely that Neto decision because that was just so poor. Like we were having the debate the other day that the toenail offside rule, but that was just he wasn't even offside. It, it that was one. Of, that's one of the ones I remember thinking that <laughs> that's an offside, but. Yeah, I think no, it's I risky think going with everyone, that, That's at the height of when everyone was tweeting Liverpool, and that just completely done it for me. I thought, right, they're they're cheating. I'm like, oh, but no, nah, honestly, I think it is that decision. That was dodgy, but that, there's been loads of them this season. Yeah, yeah, there's been quite a few, but that's the one that ticked me off the most because we would have taken a one nil lead into that into the half time, okay. and we who knows, we might have even got out and won. There's very different between draw going in drawing nil nil and going in one nil up, especially since we we play better in the second yeah. half. But I don't. Know. Been no, it's been one nil. It would have been one nil, and then we would have. Oh, it might have been one one. I don't know. It's very different though. Going in losing, you're just going to get your head down, aren't you? Going in drawing, you're going to think, oh, maybe we can come out with something. And then going and winning is an even better feeling. Do you know what I mean? I sound like I'm chatting shit, but I'm genuinely, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm being dead Money's serious. Gone. I'm being dead serious. <laughs> yeah. There's so, two. Jamie, what about you? I don't know, because there's loads. I, I was trying to sort of go off what had the most effects in, like, what game was most important when it happened. So I think... Alexander Arnold handball. That that was the one I was going to do because I feel like that was just most important. Like I feel like that's the game Liverpool won the league. Yeah, I agree. It's a and the what the Van Dijk handball, the TAA yeah, handball. handball, the one where he literally Sorry, put his hand it should out. Should have been a penalty to eight, like a mile off his body. Basically, like a goalkeeper. I don't know because didn't something dodgy happen with Bernardo Silva before that, or was it after? Um, I I think it was before, but it, you, you, I, you can't excuse the fact that if he didn't handball it, have Sterling would have scored. Should have been pulled out. And then Liverpool went up the other end and scored. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, shouldn't the goal have been disallowed even if it wasn't a penalty? Exactly. No, yeah, 100% it should. And I think their excuse but was that right. it happened too long after the goal was scored. Yeah, but it was like, another phase of play or something. Liverpool, penalty, Van Dijk handballed it, and they went up the other end and scored. But that goal was was that handball was in the build up to their goal. So I would actually argue that's another decision that should go on this list. Uh, yeah, you can add decisions, but I I still think the De La Fe, no, not De La Fe, So I did Trent on Arnold handball. Another one I would would have said was the Kane goal against Sheffield United yeah. when. Uh, they tripped Moore up and the ball hit his shoulder and Kane went on and scored and they just allowed it. That, that yeah, for me, was just yeah, no, that was that, disgraceful. That, that, yeah, that's a shocking decision. You can't give a handball if... 
the handball was that one was complete bollocks. No, yeah, I agree. Mike, yeah, so I'm going Trent Alexander on handball yeah. against City. Right. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my decision, but like since it's two to one, that's fair, that's fair enough. Yeah, he um, so the- I do think that that was such a shocking decision though that Johnny offside Neto goal decision that was that was just so poor. Yeah, I think that is the right decision, to be honest. Conversation, mm-hmm. fuck up of the year. Trent Alexander on old handball against Man City. You nearly said Chelsea for some weird reason. Right, let's go goal of the season. I need to ramp through these. Fabinho against Palace. Johan Kabash, however you say it, against Chelsea. Vardy against Bournemouth. Tomori against Wolves. Max saw that one live. Rodriguez against Chelsea. De Bruyne against Newcastle. Son against Burnley. Ayu against West Ham, Martial against Watford, and Neto against West Ham. Mine right. is on West Ham. Who? Yours, West, who? Sorry? Who? Son West Ham. Son, Son against Burnley. Wait, was it Burnley? Yeah, yeah nice. No, to be fair, man. Yeah. Carrot Yeah, against Burnley. Look, I would actually say it's mine is Tamori against Wolves because having been there and seen that, the way he picked up, how composed he was with the shooting. He just knew. You just knew when he picked it up, it was going to go top corner. Like he was going to shoot, and it was going to go top corner. I'm sorry, but he did, and it, that but was just painful to watch. To but it was such a great goal. And Max, there's a lot. Some of us even <laughs> applauded it in the home end. Some of us even applauded it. Like we were like, "Oh no, nah, fair play!" Like that's that's a great goal. So I'm actually going to go with that goal. You seen when the ball fell? to a defender top corner. No, I knew that was going top bins, mate. When he wound up to shoot, what? I thought, oh no, this is going to go top bins. And what's worse is I brought my Chelsea mate along with me to watch that game. And I had to hold him down because I could see he also thought that was going to, mate, honestly, I had to hold him down because he was going to get up and go, yeah, and like lose it. And just, oh, in the Wolves end as well. So, What are you saying then, Charlie? I think I'm saying Max is just Chatting complete shit. Um, and no, going I'm sorry, against no, Burnley. Honestly, when he shot, I knew that was going top bins. Because just, <laughs> uh, yeah, Son's goal just, had a bit of everything, didn't it? You know, a bit of skill and just a run from yeah. his own ball and then it was a tidy finish. I'm going to say... Wasn't that the game that he got a red card in as well? I don't, I don't think so. He got a... No, he got a red card against Everton, didn't he? Oh, yeah, get for Gomez and he started crying. Yeah, yeah for the Gomez thing, yeah. So, yeah, I think Son, goal of the season. Not too many complaints, even though Max thought Tamori was going to score. I that. personally, mate, I'm sticking by genuinely. You just knew when he was shooting it, it was going top bins. Ask Next anyone in that stadium, they will tell you that. Manager of the season, then. I think we've decided Son, uh, Burnley was goal of the season. Manager of the season. Yeah, that's right. Klopp, Jurgen Klopp, Frank Lampard, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Nuno Espirito Santo, Chris Wilder, and Brendan Rodgers. The controversial opinion is back. Nuno deserves it. He worked with the smallest squad. He still took them to seventh. Everyone wrote <laughs> us off at the start of the season, right? Everyone wrote us off, and we still finished top squad. We sold. We let go of three players in January, and we made. We still made top seven. I'm sorry, but no other manager is doing that. No, I'm sorry. Took us to seven. That is the saddest thing I've ever heard in my life. Nah, mate. Honestly, you guys don't understand. You're top six fans, mate. Where did Wolves finish last season? Seventh. So he took you to the same place that you finished last (laughs) season. Yeah, but mate, you got to understand. We were fighting for Champions League at one point. You don't do that with that size of the squad. You cannot do that. It's humanly impossible. Well, Chris Wilder was fighting for Champions League with Sheffield United, who have just been promoted. He had loads of depth. Yeah, but you've got a ten times better squad. Yeah, I wouldn't say so. I'd say we're quite similar on paper. To be fair, it's not not maybe not up front. Their defence probably about the same as ours. Their midfield is probably about as good. No, I'm not even believing it. Um, Mate, I'm telling you, Nuno is manager of the season. This is my view. This is my view. Back down to planet Earth. Um, If Chris Wild, if we were doing this before lockdown, Chris Wilder, if we're doing it after lockdown, which we are, Klopp, I think Wilder's dropped too far for him to get I, manager I think of the year. I can see, Joe, you know since since you don't like me going for Nuno, which I can understand, 
my second choice would be Klopp or Wilder, probably Wilder. But I, I can see why you're saying Klopp. He didn't bring There's... anyone in in the summer, but they Klopp still kept and that mentality. They nearly went unbeaten Start in the season. Um, yeah, you can't not give it to Klopp for what he's done. Yeah, well, Winning that by 18 points. Yeah, he's doing a very, very good City side. More of a shout if he didn't finish the season badly and finish ninth. But I feel like you can't give it to a manager that finished ninth. Yeah, I agree. But he, he did well, nevertheless. But Klopp, 100%. Yeah. Finally, yeah. the one, the player of the season, Kevin De Bruyne, Jordan Henderson. I've included him because... Some people think he deserves it. Sadio Mane, Trent Alexander-Arnold, or Bruno Fernandes, or Virgil van Dijk. Does anyone in there think Jordan Henderson? No. No. What are you mad? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. He's not. He's not even Liverpool's best player. We have one minute he's twenty him. left. He's by the way, the captain and he's kept him consistent all season. Mane, Van Dijk, it's... Alexander-Arnold were all better. In all it. fairness, though, you did notice when Henderson was missing. It was noticeable when he was missing. No, you I, can't compare Henderson to Kevin De Bruyne. Henderson is literally just a bang average football. No, player. no, no. Of course you can't. But it was, it was very. As a captain, he's very, very good. Like it wasn't definitely noticeable when Henderson was missing. I mean, Henderson's not even top twenty midfielders in the world, and Kevin De Bruyne is probably top of that list. Uh, you can't literally laugh at all the people even mention Henderson in it. Oh, yeah, of course. But I do think Henderson as a captain is very strong. And it was it's definitely, it's like, just, everyone said it. It's just the only people who think it are probably Liverpool fans. And it's just them being biased. Like, it's literally like me saying Matic deserves player of the year. Like, it's complete shit. He's been quite consistent recently. Honestly, Matic. he's been better than Henderson. So, who are you going with? I'm going with Kevin De Bruyne, 100%. Um, I'm going with De Bruyne as well, yeah. Well, would it, um, yeah. Possibly De Van Dijk, he's been quite consistent but as you say De Bruyne clear of everyone yeah I think Kevin De Bruyne Mane close but De Bruyne player of the season I think yeah mm. um, just as well to, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll say goodbye because there's less than a minute so just to recap then signing of the season Bruno Fernandes flop of the season Joe Linton individual performance of the season Trent Alexander-Arnold of Leicester against Leicester surprise package of the season was Bakari Saka. Shock of the season was Leicester 9, Southampton 0. Young player of the season was Mason Greenwood. Conversation fuck-up of the season was Trent Alexander-Arnold's handball against City. Goal of the season was Son against Burnley. Manager of the season was Jurgen Klopp. And player of the season was Kevin De Bruyne. Thank you both, Maximus and Jamie, for joining us. You can catch us all on our various Twitter accounts. It'll be in the description. Thank you for watching. Let us know what you think by plopping them in the comments below. And we will see you very soon on the delayed kickoff.